Catholic Church. Go on, lady.
Endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With the mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been Forever. Forever. 
Open your Bibles to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. <clears throat> Let's 
let's see if we can have a little bit of fun this morning as we're going through this. <clears throat> but first, let's ask God to bless our time together in His Word. Heavenly Father, we just thank You. We thank You for everything that You've done for us. Sending Your Son, raising Him from the dead to purchase our salvation. Father, as we look into your word this morning, we just ask that you guide, watch over us, help us to take the things of the day and set them aside and focus on you and you alone. I pray that the Holy Spirit is our teacher this morning. And Dan's just a mouthpiece. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Jesus was aggressive in spreading the gospel. Would you agree with that? Nod your head, yes, Claire. Absolutely. Time and time again, as we've seen in Project 36, and we've discussed it time and time again, okay, he didn't take any prisoners. He got in the face of the religious authorities. He doesn't back off from that. He did not wait for the opposition to come to him. He went there. This meant that Jesus was seen uh, teaching in the synagogue or in the temple much of the time. And from, uh, from these places, he taught, he, he tended to get in trouble. Why? because he was going against the establishment. How does that affect you and I today? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Number one, Jesus in Galilee. Jesus went to Galilee and basically stayed in Galilee because it was too dangerous to go back to Judea. Now, we may say, well, how come it was, if you look and read the narrative and all the Gospels, you'll find out okay, that Jesus' life was threatened time and time again. But Jesus being obedient to the Father, slipped away through the crowd, or just didn't show up. It was God's timing, not his timing. Now, in, the, in these first 13 verses, we see that, that Jesus and his brothers were trying to, trying to hustle. Trying to hustle Jesus to come in. Hey, Jesus, come and do your thing. Jesus, we want to we want to hang on coattails. That's why he wanted to keep a low profile. Why, why do you think that? Look at verse six. He says, "Jesus told them, my time is not yet here. For you, any time will do. The world cannot hate cannot hate you, but it hates me because what? Because I testify of its works are evil. You go to the festival." I'm not going up to the festival because my time is not fully come. Jesus had a timetable. We we talked and, and alluded to that a little bit this morning in Sunday school. Okay? We're talking about our, our spiritual growth. Very few, very few is the believer that's come to Christ and understands all this. Understands the Bible. Now, it may be head knowledge. 
but he doesn't understand it. He hasn't got that relationship. That relationship takes time. Look at verse 7. Go back to that. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. Now, a lot of times we think, and the world portrays Jesus okay, as that soft Galilean who just healed everybody and was very passive. And that's not the Jesus I know. The Jesus I know, okay, calls it like it is. He wasn't mean and nasty about it, but he didn't back down. Sin is sin, and I'm calling it sin. And for that, our world rejects him. God does it his way. It's taken me a lifetime to understand that. It's taken me a lifetime to take a step backwards and say, okay, God, you've got this all planned out anyway. God doesn't need Dan's help. He doesn't. And the box that, that we do here which I think, it's just a great thing. Who instituted that? Cecil do that? Okay. That's another one for Cecil. Okay. As much as I, you know, criticize that guy and get on him and, and bust his chops, he's got some, some great ideas every once in a while. Okay. That's one of them. But we, we talk about the box here, and it's like, okay, what's in the box? The world, and sometimes you and I, try to put God in that box. He doesn't belong there. And even if we could, we can't. God's much bigger than, than that box. Now, number two, Jesus testifies... At the feast. <clears throat> like today, we are challenged now and again, what is your source? Where do you get your information from? Jesus testifies of that. Gives them the source of his teaching. And we should notice one thing in verse 16. Okay. Get down to verse 16. Jesus says this. My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Who sent him? God did. Jesus stands right there and says, look, this is not my own. This is from the one who sent me. This is God's teaching. Now notice verse 17. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. So he's challenging them and saying, look, this is coming from God. If you don't believe that, challenge it. See if it's, see if it's me speaking or if it's the Father speaking through me. Are we available for God to speak through us? Or do we want to do our own thing and put our own slant? to God's Word. Time and again,
we find people who want to take ownership for what God has said. Time and again, we find people who, well, I don't like the way God worded that, so I'm going to help God out and tweak it a little bit. No. God says what he means. God will reveal truth to, the, to people who really want to know what God says. But the people and the person who, who wants to debate and, and philosophize to, to glorify self, they're not going to know the truth. Absolutely not. Look at verse 18. Whoever speaks on their own does so to what? To gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. For the guys in the room, for Casey and Cole and myself, okay, specifically, okay, we stand up here and we do our best to present God's Word. It would behoove you okay, to open God's Word and see if we're lying to you or not. How many of us do that? We're certainly not up here to toot our own horn. Now notice, in verses 25 through 39, Jesus' testimony that he is the Messiah. Now let's, let's, let's back up here just momentarily and say, look, the common belief that Messiah would come with some mysterious and spectacular manner, man's tradition. Okay? Can, can I bust bubbles this morning? Okay? It, it's coming up on that season. Okay? And I know Mary's going to say something to me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. We've got to quit taking our, our, our theology from Hallmark Christmas cards. The wise men weren't there. That's tradition. It looks good. It feels good. It's not biblical. It's like, and here's what's happened here. Our Messiah is going to come. He's going to come on a white horse. He's going to come and... and is that the way the Messiah came? Absolutely not. Here's some other ones. Messiah, okay, was thought to be a uh, Judea. It came from Bethlehem. Okay, that's true. But many thought that Jesus was a Galilean because that's where he spent all his time. So for me, I've got to do my homework when I study God's Word. What does God's Word really say? And not what... There's a third problem. <clears throat> many, uh, many thought the Messiah was a being is to be a strong upholder of the law. Jesus appeared indifferent to the law as interpreted by the rabbis. Time and again, we find that Jesus did not support rabbinical law. Why? 
because mo most, most of the rabbis are, were in it for self. Look at me. And they were taught the little boys all the way up these traditions. And these traditions were wrong. This is who the Messiah is. It's God's law, not rabbinical law. It's God's word, not SBC doctrine. Hello? Jesus didn't meet the expectations of people. Jesus was obedient to the Father first. First and foremost. Now, he didn't go out of his way, okay, just to, oh, what can I do now? But if you notice the way Jesus conducted himself, he was always obedient to the Father, first and foremost. If that went against your tradition, so be it. More than once, the establishment tried to arrest him and get rid of him. More than once, you and I have seen it in our lifetime of trying to splash Christianity. More than once, we've heard reports of those brothers and sisters in Christ in foreign countries being martyred because they utter the name of Jesus. Notice over in verse, what is it, verse uh, 37, I believe. Uh, here was a solemn ceremony that was being taken, taken place, and Jesus stood up in the middle of it, and he said this, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. Can you imagine in the midst of this, of this religious ceremony, okay, Jesus stands up and says, hey, you're thirsty? I got the living water. Come drink. You'll never be thirsty again. How rude. Could, couldn't you have waited till, till after we were done with our ceremony? No. Nope. The truth is the truth. Now Jesus may say to us today, you are fundamental in doctrine. But where are the fruits of the Spirit? Your rituals are pretty and, and, and precise. Where's the power? You have your commentaries and Bible notes. But what about your mission? Hmm. I try to answer those, but I have a hard time, to be honest with you. You're fundamental in your doctrine. 
But are the fruits of the Spirit in my life, are they demonstrated? We go through rituals and, and, and they're pretty and precise and, and we try to make it orderly and where's the power? Where's the power that God gives? Where is the power that works through me, not because of me? And, and, and all this knowledge and stuff that we have at our disposal, what about our mission? What's that mission? Go. Not stay, not get a big head, okay? Not get some spiritually fat, I can't get off my duff, to go. In verses 40 through 52, we find that, that people are still divided. We have religions today that still call him a prophet. Is he a prophet? Yes. Is he a king? Yes. Okay. Is he our savior? Yes. Is he our high priest? Yes. Why don't they mention those things? Notice what happens over here. <clears throat> the temple guards here in verse 40, starting in verse 45 here. This, finally, the temple guards um, went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees uh, who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? Notice what it says in verse 46. No one ever spoke the way this man does. How did he speak? Time and time again, we see that Jesus speaks with what? With authority. What does that mean? Okay. That he has the bully pulpit? No. He speaks with authority because what? He is the authority. Jesus could say, hey, you're, you're quoting this law. Well, how do you know? I wrote it. Throw that next one up, please. You heard this. Uh, uh, Mary referred to this at the ladies' Bible study. She didn't know she was stealing my thunder this morning, so that's she's off the hook. Okay. But through the ages, many religious religious leaders have put the common guy down when he's not highly schooled with religious traditions. The modern Pharisees, you know, those people, those, they're only laymen. Okay. I refer to those people as ring knockers. Ever been to a ring knocker club? Okay. Every time a new pastor comes in town, okay, it's like, okay, where'd you go to seminary? Who'd you study under? What was your professor? Yada, 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 yada. And if you don't give the quite the correct answer, okay. Well, you're just, you're just a layman, okay? You may have a little knowledge, but you're not as good as I went to this university. So the setting for me was in my first pastorate, my first uh, pastor's breakfast. We used to go down to so this, this bowling alley, okay, and have breakfast, okay? It was nothing but grease, but we enjoyed it anyway, okay? Went down there, 
and I, and I saw it coming. Guy says, hey, you know, when I went to school, that's the way they always start out. When, they, when I went to school, yeah, yeah. so I went around the table. Okay, I went to school. I went to this professor. Okay, I went to this university. I went to this, 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 this. It comes all the way around, you know, and I'm sitting here going, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Hmm. And I think you know Dan well enough by now. Okay. I said, this is the way I'm going to, this is the way I'm going to answer. I said, I'm still working on my AO degree. What? From HSU. What, what school is that? I said, no, you don't understand. I'm still working on absolute obedience degree from the Holy Spirit University. Hey, look, folks. This is what you need. This is what you need. Now, are there benefits to going there? Maybe. But are they indoctrination centered? Or. Are they truly giving you God's word? Each of them's got to decide. Now, I'm not putting them down. There's, there's a place for all that stuff. Okay. But you can tell I'm never going to be president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Wouldn't want to be. That's too much politics for me. What, what's the point here? The point here is, look, God has given us everything we need in His Word. Take it to heart. Be obedient to it. Don't veer from it. Let's close with this. Stand with the minority as they remember and honor Him. Stand with the vocal minority when others search for them. Stand with the minority when they pray to the Father through him. And bow with the minority in adoration and praise and thanksgiving to him. He who calmed the sea healed the lame he who raised the dead, who wept, is worthy of our stand for him. Stand with me. Father, we thank you for our time together. And Lord, we just pray that what's been said this morning will stir our hearts. Not because it's Dan, but because it's your word. Because time and time again, you stand and the Father points to the Son. This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit lifts Jesus up and glorifies Him as well. Let us be bold in our faith. Let us take a stand for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Power on. Bluetooth pairing. Bluetooth connected.